Welcome. I'm Daughter of Darkness. For many people, their pets are closer to them than friends or family. These animals enhance their lives, and when they're gone, they leave a definite hole in your life. So it's not hard to believe that these companions continue to watch over you after their death. Those are the stories we'll be exploring here tonight. Be sure to join me here every Thursday at 5 p.m. Central for new content. If you like tonight's video, give it a thumbs up, share the link, and comment below. We have to keep the great gods of YouTube happy so they won't devour the channel. They are so needy, those gods of YouTube. But for now, sit back, relax, let me lead the way. And let's get scared together, 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 together. I went on a vacation in the Midwest to an area that had a lot of metaphysical shops. I told my husband that I'd always wanted to see a psychic, so I made an appointment and went to one. She began by describing my children and their personalities as if she knew them personally. She knew their strengths and weaknesses, and she got everything right. So I asked her next to please contact my grandmother who had died eight years earlier. The psychic was sitting there with her eyes closed and began to laugh and make an odd face. She apologized and said that she was really trying to connect with my grandmother, but that something else kept getting into the way of her vision. Then she asked me, Do you have a lot of dogs on the other side? I don't mean one dog. I mean a lot of dogs. There's a bunch of them here, and there's more coming. And there's one, a special one. The light from this dog is so bright it's almost blinding. It's impossible not to pay attention to him. She continued speaking with her eyes still closed. This dog is your spirit guide, and he's still with you. He loves you and is protecting you from the other side. And there are just so many other dogs that keep appearing. I'm sorry, but I can't focus on anything else but them right now. But I am trying to get to your grandmother. She then opened her eyes and saw me sitting there with tears running down my face. I was crying so hard I couldn't breathe. I finally pulled myself together and told her, Yeah, there were a lot of dogs in my life. My passion has always been animal rescue, ever since I was a child. I fostered and saved literally hundreds of dogs from horrible situations. Just prior to my visit, I had lost three dogs that were very special to me. One of them I'd raised from an abandoned puppy and loved him his whole life till he died. And I think he was the spirit guide. When I told her this, she said, That makes a lot more sense now. I've never had a reading take a turn like this. But I'm here to tell you, you are protected by them. And that you're definitely doing what you're meant to do in life. These dogs are your biggest fans and they act as your guides and they want you to know that they're still with you and always will be. I left the place, went back to my hotel, and I cried for an hour. That reading was the best part of my trip. My cat comes to visit me a lot. She died a few years ago, but while I'm lying in bed in the morning, I'll feel her jump up, walk around, then lie down on my hip. It's how she used to wake me up for school every day. I used to think I was just dreaming, but it's also happened when I'm awake, so I have no explanation for it. Her death wasn't a surprise as she was old. I'd had her since I was two, and she was the only one from her litter still alive. She always seemed way too smart for a cat and would show up just when you needed her, as if she sensed that you were in need of comfort. She also had a very weird ritual of building an altar out of rocks in the woods, and she'd leave a portion of her prey in the middle of it. It was a little ring of rocks placed in a circle, and I never saw her do it, but if we even moved a pebble of it, it would just get rebuilt in the same spot every time. When she'd kill something, she'd leave a little piece of it in the circle, almost like an offering. We found things like half a snake, half a frog, a mouse head, bird feathers, and what we think was the tail of a rabbit. It was creepy, according to my mom, but I always thought it was cool. I'm not entirely sure why she did this. I haven't been able to come up with a logical explanation for it. 
Nothing and no one else ever touched that circle except us and her. And we only touched it to tear it down. But she'd rebuild. No other animals went near it, even though we were living in a rural part of Kentucky and there were plenty of other animals around. I had friends tell me that my cat creeped them out because she would look at them like she was a human. So that spawned theories that she was more than a cat. The theories included that she was a reincarnation of a human, or a shapeshifter, or what some people call a familiar, a cat that consorts with witches. I don't know how or why she was the way she was, but she lived almost ten years longer than any of her cat siblings, and she could unlock and open doors. Even when we switched door locks, she could still do it. Unlike me, my family are hyper-religious, and they were all horribly freaked out by it. But I loved her. My friend's dog stuck around after death. My friend told me that one day a repairman came over to fix the AC unit, and he saw a dog sitting on the ottoman near where he was working. He said the dog was wagging his tail and just watching him, so he spoke to the dog the entire time he was fixing the AC. There were two other dogs in the house, but they were with my friend in another room. At some point, he had to ask my friend a question, so he went in the other room and found her. She asked him who he had been talking to that whole time, and he said, your dog. But she said that couldn't be because the dogs were with her the whole time. Confused, he walked into the other room and looked at the ottoman, but the dog was gone. He swore up and down that there was a dog there, and he described what it looked like to my friend. So my friend pulled up a picture of her dead dog on her cell phone and asked if that was the dog. He said, yeah, that's the one. She then told him that that particular dog had died a few months ago. His eyes got wide, and after that... He made my friend stand next to him the entire time while he finished the job. He said he hadn't believed in the paranormal until then. I had a German Shepherd mix named Goody since she was a puppy. Then she got really sick and died at home. It was heartbreaking watching her go. A night or two after she died, I had a dream that she was there with me. She was lying on her side like when she was dying, but then she sprang up and wagged her tail, as if she was telling me that she wasn't in pain any longer. She led me through the house to the backyard. My grandmother was out in the yard with all of the other pets that had passed. Birds, cats, dogs, all happily running around. My dog sat down with me and nuzzled me. I think she was trying to tell me that she'd wait for me and not to worry about her anymore, and I woke up feeling very happy. For a long time I thought it was just my brain playing tricks on me, something to help me cope with the pain of her passing. But I have children now, and my two-year-old will sometimes point to an empty corner of the room and say, Wolf! I don't have any dogs at the moment, and I think if my two-year-old daughter saw a large dog, she would confuse it for a wolf. I think Goody is still around me. My dead dog has come to me in my dreams twice. In the first dream, he came to me looking healthy and young and very peaceful. We walked along for quite some time, and then he turned to me and he said telepathically that I couldn't follow him but that he was all right and I'd see him again one day. He came to me in a dream a second time, too. He was sitting on the couch looking at me. This time I wasn't happy to see him because I knew what he was going to tell me, that he came to get my other dog, who was 12 years old at the time, and it was her time to go. I told him to stay where he was because I was not about to let her go just yet. He said that we have some time left, but that he was waiting for her, and she wouldn't be alone. He'd be with her the entire time. I called my mom to tell her about the dream, and she said that she had had the very same dream. My second dog died two days ago, and I'm waiting for her to come visit me in my dreams. It comforts me to know that she didn't have to go it alone, 
because my first dog was waiting for her, and they'll wait for me when my time comes. So I do believe that our pets live on after death, and visit us. I had my dog Nikita for 16 years, and we had a very tight bond. I had rescued her from an abuser, and she returned the favor by saving me from an intruder one time. The day I had to put her down, a big part of my heart went with her. That night, while I was sobbing, I felt something brush against my hand. I quickly jumped up thinking it might be a spider, but it was no spider. It was Nikita, touching my hand. For ten minutes at least, my heart was full and my eyes were clear. She then came to me in a dream a week later. She showed me that she had an endless supply of tennis balls, and she showed me scenes of her running around and playing with animals on the other side. And she was with my mother, too, who passed four years earlier. I don't believe in life after death, but this is something that I still can't explain. When I was a teenager, our cat Georgie passed away. He'd been with our family since he was a kitten. He was a 20-pound Angora cat, and he had a habit while alive of waiting for everybody else in the house to go to bed. Then he'd jump up on my mom's bed, walk across it, and settle down on the covers to sleep. Two or three days after Georgie died, it was bedtime. I was in my room, and my parents were in their bed reading before going to sleep. I heard my mom say, Georgie? The way she said it made me get up and go into her room. Mom said, Georgie just jumped up on my bed, but when I looked, there was nothing there. We looked over at the corner of the bed where he always slept, and all three of us saw it a short track of maybe six to eight indentations, as if a cat's paws had depressed the fabric. To this day, I still can't explain it. I'm a skeptic by nature, but there's something that happened that I think about from time to time. I wasn't home when my cat died. I'd moved to another town and she stayed behind with my parents. I wanted to bring her along, but she was old and set in her ways, and it wouldn't have been fair to uproot her like that. I'd had her for years, and for a while, she was my only friend. I loved her dearly, and I was the only person that she would allow to cuddle with her or show any affection to at all. No one else really liked her much. They mostly just tolerated her for my benefit. I felt beyond guilty when she died. Even though it was so unexpected, I felt that I should have been there for her anyway. When I was finally able to get home weeks later, I couldn't stop thinking about her. It felt silly, but I was compelled to talk to her out loud. I told her how sorry I was that I wasn't there for her, and I really hoped that she was okay. That night, as I was falling asleep, I heard my door creak open. I would always leave the door open a crack for her, and every night she'd push it open and come join me in bed. As the door opened, I heard a very soft meow, and I felt something jump onto the bed with me, like she'd always done. Then, whatever it was, curled up next to me and I felt a warmth and pressure on my side. My cat always slept by my side, curled up under my arm. I don't know how to explain it, and I should have been freaked out, but I wasn't. I don't tell many people the story, but it felt so real and reassuring, and it definitely helped me to believe that pets hang around and that we will see them again one day. The first dog that my husband and I first bought together was a black miniature schnauzer named Maverick. I loved that dog. He died when he was eight years old, and I was devastated. I prayed that I could have one last moment with him to say goodbye. A few weeks later, I got the answer to my prayer. I went to bed, and while asleep, 
I felt him jump onto the bed and curl up right next to my face on the pillow. I pet him and nuzzled my face into his fur, and I didn't want it to end. I knew it was a dream, and I tried not to wake up, because I knew once I did, it would be over. But it was so real to me. I truly feel that he was there with me in spirit, letting me have my one final snuggle with him. That was eight years ago, and I can still remember it as if it just happened today. At the time this happened to me, it didn't fit into my belief system at all, but I've come to accept it. I had a dog named Sassy, whom I loved more than any dog I've ever had. I got very ill, and I had to undergo a series of operations. While recovering, I needed to move away from home for several months and stay at a friend's house. Another friend who lived on a farm took Sassy in. She was going to take care of her until I was well enough to come home. But one night, Sassy developed a sudden illness, and she died before my friend could get her to the vet. I was inconsolable, until one night I had a dream. I dreamed that I was walking in a meadow, and Sassy came running over to greet me. I was overjoyed, and I kept thinking, Sassy's come back home to me. Sassy's back. We played together, and she ran around like she had when she was alive. I've never had a dream that seems so real. When I woke up, I was crying, but something about that dream comforted me. Before this, I would have told you I didn't believe in signs from the dead or visitations, but I can't get it out of my head that for a brief moment, my sassy came back to me, just as she had been in life. I'm now working on a master's degree in grief and bereavement, and one thing I've learned, it's not unusual at all for grieving people to be visited by their dead loved ones. Many people blame it on the extreme distress of grief, but I don't dismiss the idea that our dead loved ones may actually be visiting us. Did Sassy really come to me in a dream? I don't know. But I do know that the dream seems strangely real, and it gave me comfort that I hadn't been able to find before. My girlfriend's dog died two years ago. I spent the night with her the next day, and that night, I heard the dog's nails on the tile floor walking around. I even felt her lay her head on the palm of my hand like she used to. It had me crying. We lost our 15-year-old cat yesterday. A few hours later... I was lying on the couch when I felt a distinct warmth against my abdomen and I felt a purring vibration. It went on for several minutes. I lost my dog two years ago. Before he passed, he waited to see everyone one last time before he died. Initially, my parents didn't want to wake me up but the dog waited for me. Once I was awake and went to him, he let out his last breath and died in my arms. Even after he was buried, I still felt that he was around me. It lasted for several days. The day after he died, I was in my room and I thought I saw my dog's tail out of the corner of my eye. I momentarily forgot that he was dead and it took a minute to realize that he wasn't alive anymore. So I ignored it thinking it was just my imagination, but I felt like he was nearby. This went on for a day or two, and then it just stopped. Have you ever had a pet come back and visit you? Post about it in the comments section. Thank you so much for listening tonight and for your continued support. And don't forget... Every fourth Thursday of the month, we meet 30 minutes early for live chat at 4.30 p.m. Central. Then we all watch the video together. It's just a fun thing that we can all do together as the family of darkness. If you'd like a reminder, 
subscribe and hit the notification bell. Otherwise, just try to remember it on your own. So, until next time, stay scared, my friends. <laughs>